This is Ancient India and China, World History Standard 2. Found in modern day parts of Pakistan and India. Around 2500 BCE is when this civilization emerged. We don't know much about this civilization because its language and its culture has not been translated. It's still a mystery to historians today. Along the Indus River Valley, we saw the city-state of Harappa emerge. Thus the reason we refer to the Harappan civilization. The cities were well planned with plumbing and sewage, and as remarkable as it may sound, they had a population of up to 100,000 people almost 5,000 years ago. Wow. The Mauryan Empire, 322 to 185 BCE. It was founded by a guy named Chandragupta Maurya. He's important because he founded the empire. He established an empire that actually stopped the advance of Alexander the Great. And it became the largest empire ever on the Indian subcontinent. One of the most famous emperors was Emperor Ashoka. Originally, he was a great military leader, but after witnessing a gruesome and bloody battle, he converted to Buddhism. But let's not forget that he was the grandson of Chandragupta Maurya. And one of his big things that he did was he was religiously tolerant. That's right, whatever your religion was, you could practice it. After that empire was the Gupta Empire, known as the Golden Age of India. It was founded by Chandragupta, not to be confused with Chandragupta Maurya. This one was Chandra, last name Gupta, thus the Gupta Empire. It was a time of peace and prosperity. That's why we call it a golden age. It was a time when literature and art and all sorts of fancy stuff flourished. It was the last Hindu ruled empire until the 20th century. That's right, it was the Gupta Empire, the golden age. No, not that kind of golden age. This kind of golden age. Math, science, literature. Thanks, you gave us zero. Have some pie. Now, let's not forget about Hinduism. It emerged in South Asia. It was a polytheistic religion. And it stressed things like karma and dharma. Karma is kind of like your spiritual thermometer how well you fulfill your duties. Dharma, well, those are your duties, the things that you're supposed to do in your life. How well you fulfill your dharma impacts your karma. These teachings came from the sacred texts known as the Vedas or the Upanishads. And the three most important gods of this polytheistic religion, Brahma, Shiva, and Vishnu. Buddhism, on the other hand, actually grew out of Hinduism. It was founded by a wealthy prince named Siddhartha Gautama. He left on a journey to find out what was wrong in the world and how to fix it. At the end of this journey, he became enlightened thus became known as the Buddha. The Buddha found that the Four Noble Truths were the way to find inner happiness and thus he became enlightened. It was an attempt to improve Hinduism and he felt 
that it was the right way for people to progress in life. Aside from India, there was also early civilization in Southeast China. These civilizations emerged on the Huanghe or Yellow River. This is the area shaded on the map. This is where we see two of the earliest of Chinese dynasties emerge. Along the river, we saw these civilizations really take shape. The first dynasty, the Xia dynasty, we don't know nearly as much about because of its impact on the environment. However, we do know that they learned to control the flooding of the river, which assisted them in being able to rise to power. However, by the year 1500, we saw the Shang Dynasty emerge, and this one was much more like the future dynasties to come. Eventually, however, it was then absorbed by the Zhou, or Zhao Dynasty. In your notes, entitle it The Dynastic Cycle. Be sure to indicate a box for old dynasty characteristics, problems that that old dynasty may incur, and then things that the new dynasty would put in place. Please pause the video while you draw this chart. In viewing the items on this list, please attempt to place these issues, characteristics, or solutions in the proper box from the previous slide. Pause the video so that you can complete this activity. And now, Let's see how you did. Here, old dynasties tax people too much. They stop protecting people, and the infrastructure, or what actually runs the dynasty, decays. They treat people unfairly. Therefore, it is a clear sign that they have lost the mandate of heaven. Problems then also emerge. Floods, earthquakes, natural disasters, peasant revolts, invasions, and banditry is on the rise. Thus signaling that a new dynasty must rise to power. They will bring peace, rebuild infrastructure, give land to the peasants, and protect the people. Please pause the video so you can assure that you have these characteristics recorded. Now on to China. China's Zhao Dynasty. This is the first time we see a real sense of the mandate of heaven and the dynastic cycle. The mandate of heaven emphasizes that moral rulers will be blessed by peace and stability. And that's how we know they should be in power. If they should not be in power, there will be bad things like losses in wars and natural disasters. If that should happen, one dynasty will transfer out and a new dynasty will transfer in. The change from one dynasty to another is known as the dynastic cycle. This was our longest lasting Chinese dynasty, but it definitely was not the one that had the biggest impact. There was no sense of centralized power, 
and towards its end it declined into a period of time known as the Warring States Period. The Warring States period was a time of great turmoil in China. However, out of this craziness that is the Warring States period, we did see some good things emerge. Confucianism, which emphasized relationships, emerged in this time period and was written about in the Confucian writing known as the Analects. It emphasized the concept of a patriarchal family. A patriarchal family is one that is ruled by the father. Another dynasty that emerged was known as Taoism. D-A-O-I-S-M. D-A-O-I-S-M. It was founded by someone named Lao Tzu. He said that nature will create balance. And the best government is one that will allow nature to run its course. The third philosophy that emerged during the Warring States period was legalism. And it emphasized the importance of laws. People will react to rewards and punishments. And the easiest way to maintain power is through strict laws. When considering these three, it's apparent that one should emerge over the others. On the map, you can see the Qin Dynasty. At this point, they were not a dynasty. They were just a family. But due to their military superiority, they were able to emerge as the next dominant dynasty of China. No, I know you were thinking with Taoism about the yin and the yang, but this is yin-yang twins. Sorry, different PowerPoint. So as the Qin Dynasty emerged, we saw the Warring States period end. Legalism became the dominant philosophy, which angered many people. But those angry people got to go and build the Great Wall of China. And they didn't like it. And those who really had a problem with it, well, they died. The construction of this Great Wall was the first effort by a Chinese dynasty to create a barrier to outside barbarians. A later dynasty, known as the Han Dynasty, adopted Confucianism as their philosophy. This dynasty felt the best way for them to rule and maintain stability was through the creation of the examination system. Now, anyone could take this exam, but not everyone could actually pass this exam. Well, when we say anyone could take the exam, Well, maybe not everyone. Here, we can see a chart that summarizes the key understandings for philosophies for the dynasties previously discussed. The first two dynasties did not have a specific dynasty structure centered around philosophies, because at this point, they had not been developed. However, with the emergence of the Qin Dynasty, we saw legalism widely adopted to create order. This was as a result of the fact that in the Warring States period, these three philosophies emerged. The Han Dynasty adopted Confucianism and created great peace in the land, thus showing that they possessed the mandate of heaven. However, over time, legalism became their structure. It may come as no surprise that Taoism never quite made it to widespread adoption. This is because Taoists are honestly not that pushy and they're not going to create an entire dynasty.
The end. The last thing we need to consider in the second world history standard is India's barrier to the rest of the world. India was able to develop independent of other cultures because of the Himalaya mountains which lie to the north. This barrier allowed empires to rise and fall and bells to ring throughout the land. <laughs>